It's bold. It's exciting. It's powerful. It's loud. It'll do 205 miles an hour and hit 62 miles an hour in three seconds. It's a plug-in hybrid. Well, I guess we better review a range and economy in that case. It's um, not that quiet for an EV. It's, it does 10 miles or so. It's got a, got a little boot. Oh, it comes with a fire extinguisher. There's that. Uh, I'll sod this. <laughs> yes, that's better. Before I go and get all excited and talk about how awesome this thing is in a slightly higher than normal pitch, let's just go through what makes it different. Because let's be honest, on the face of it, it looks like... Well, it looks like a McLaren. You see, rather than the 4-litre V8 engine that pretty much every McLaren has had since the company relaunched about a decade ago, this one has a 3-litre V6 back here in the middle. That has 585 horsepower, which you'll notice if you can do some very quick maths is 15 more than the 570S, and it has 585 newton meters of torque in a very McLaren symmetrical way. But that's not all, because under here, there's also an electric motor. Now that is mounted right inside the bell housing and the transmission, and it provides an extra 95 horsepower and 225 newton meters of torque. And all that together, means this will do 0 to 60 in three seconds, which is a very, very tiny smidge slower than the big 720S. There's also some F1 style technology going on in here. The V6 has a 120 degree angle, allowing the turbocharger to be mounted inside. This so-called hot V lowers the engine's center of gravity. It's nerdy, but in short, it just means there'll be less roll. There's more cool nerdy stuff. The engine and the motor have an extra clutch so they can decouple when you're not using the big lump of metal in the middle. And the gearbox, which handily McLaren puts on show just back here, is different. It has eight gears, which is one more than all the other McLarens, but it only has eight in total. You see, this one doesn't have a reverse gear. Instead, it just spins the electric motor backwards to send you silently in reverse. See? I told you it was nerdy. The way that works in practice is that the electric motor is mostly there for torque fill. In other words, where you would have turbo lag, it fills in, which is great because normally on McLarens, you have to be pinging somewhere near the rev limiter to get absolutely everything out of that V8. Take the GT, for example, which you really need to wring the absolute snot out of before you will really receive anything in return. This will give you all the torque and everything at 2,200 RPM, which means that when you put your foot down, you get a proper punch in the back from no matter what gear you're in. And that is really good news. Despite all of this, the Artura still only weighs 1,498 kilograms. And that's only about 50 kilograms more than the 570S and just eight kilograms more than a P1. The Artura will hit 60 miles an hour in three seconds. It will hit 124 in eight seconds. It will hit 186 miles an hour in 21 seconds. It does 205 miles an hour, limited, limited. It has to be reined back in at 205 miles an hour. That's mental. Driving the Artura is possibly the most exhilarated I felt in any McLaren. They've really worked on making sure the weight is low and minimized, and boy, can you feel that it works. It doesn't just give you one of those stupidly massive torque kicks like an EV would. It just fills in delightfully, meaning that you're at no point sitting and waiting. And that mates with a suspension system, which is 
nigh on perfect. It's nearly witchcraft. You can feel exactly how much work has gone into changing this and making sure that adding batteries and motors has not compromised this car at all. With a damping system and suspension that is, it's almost perfect. Down a road like this, it cuts out all of the nonsense that you don't need while keeping the car beautifully flat and then communicating just the bits that you really need to know. And then there's the steering, which is hydraulic. It's not electronically assisted, so it feels physical. It feels like you're actually doing something. Every single turn of the wheel feels like you are actually moving something. You're not just instructing some electronics to move the wheels backwards and forwards. And all of that together means that when you actually string it all into a series of corners, boy, are you rewarded. And that combines with the fact that this is the first McLaren ever to have an electronic limited slip diff. There's also a completely redesigned rear suspension setup, and you can really feel the way that it works. As you pitch the car into a corner, that diff stays open just to allow that it will slide ever so slightly. And then when you put your foot down, it snaps shut to fire you out, to give you that cork from a bottle to make sure that it will just go like a typhoon that's on afterburners. And when you string that all together, it is an incredible feeling. You pitch it in, you feel the sweetness of that turn in, and then the back just gently comes around, and then as you stick your foot down, the satisfaction of just pinging it away from a corner. It really is just the most connected and exhilarated I've felt in a McLaren ever. And that is saying a lot, because the 720S is an absolute monster. The GT, you have to wring its neck to feel anything, but when you do, you are rewarded. But this thing, this is just a complete car. It feels amazing. There's just this vault of performance. You have to keep dipping in and dipping in and dipping in, and then you will make noises that you don't expect. I took a corner in this car yesterday that I must have taken hundreds upon hundreds of times, and after it, I just heard myself say, hell, because the way the car turned in was like nothing I had expected, even from this, and it will just make you smile. It's so good that it is enough to make you forgive the fact that they sort of forgot to design it. Put all the time into that amazing powertrain and then just added bits of other cars so that it had an outside. There's even a section between cockpit and rear lights that just seems to not have a design at all. Then there's the engine sound, which, well, if McLarens have sort of struggled with soul until now, switching to a V6 hasn't exactly done them any favours. It doesn't make a noise to quicken the soul. To be honest, I'm not really sure I understand what this car is. It's a plug-in hybrid, but it's only got a range of about 16 miles at the end of the day. And to be honest, when it's being an EV, it's not very good. It's quite loud, even when it's just running on its motors, and it's really rather sluggish. It doesn't go particularly fast or feel like there's anything there. And then, I don't really know what it is. They say it's not a replacement for the 570S, despite the fact that it looks almost the same as one, and well, it's slower and it's not the same range as a 296 GTV. So wh wh where does this car fit? I guess it's um, I guess it's a stepping stone. Although, to give it its due, if this is a stepping stone, it's one hell of a step. And at the end of everything, you can, if you want, just put it into electric mode and cruise around. But then, I don't really want to do that. I want to do this. <laughs>